Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Laravel 5.5 New Features from the Dev Marketer channel. Now, in this video, this is the video, the ninth video of, of our series, and now we're going to be looking at a brand new way to create custom validation rules. So this is one that's going to be a really big deal, at least for me, because the way we used to have to create custom validations rules before was always just didn't feel right. It didn't feel very Laravel-like. It didn't feel very eloquent. It was just it was clunky and it was kind of a disaster. Let me get, show you guys the way you used to do um, custom validation rules. And for those of you guys that don't know what I'm talking about, inside of our project here, what we're talking about is when we're uh, validating these um, these items here, we obviously have access to a whole bunch of different validation methods. But what if you had a custom validation method that's not provided by Laravel, but you need to do some sort of special level of validation? Let's say you've got a phone number from your country and it's different than what's available elsewhere, or just maybe a URL structure that has to be um, someone submitting a GitHub um, user account or something. You want to check to make sure it's actually a GitHub URL or something like that. There's custom validation rules you might want to check in your application that aren't going to be out of the box. And so the question is, how do you create a custom validation rule so you can still run it with your validate command? Now, the way we used to run it is, I'll show you guys here a example. This is a real example of a project that I'm working on or that I was working on and um, that's done now. And what we're looking at here is this is now the app service provider. So inside of the app service provider, you used to have to put all of your validation rules inside the app service provider, which was less than ideal. Granted, this one only has one, but if you had multiple, it all gets bloated into this boot function on your app service provider. It was a bit of a disaster. This is what one of them looks like. You can see here, we would run validator extend, we'd give it a name, and then we'd have an anonymous function here, a closure. And then we basically just perform the function in here. We either return true if it passes or false if it doesn't pass, and that's how we would do it. And then we would have access to it in here by using this phone command. So with the first parameter here, we would, inside of here, we could access it by doing phone. But it obviously would have to be stored inside of our um, app service provider under this boot. And as you had more, it just got really, really bulky. So now we don't have to do that. Now the way that validations are created is using rule objects. And we can generate new rules and they're all stored in their own folder. So you have all of your custom validations in their own folder. It makes it super easy to work with. Plus, instead of them being closures, they're now objects. And so you have all the benefits of it being an object that you want. Um, which is going to make doing more advanced stuff um, a lot easier if you have to go out and ping a like one of the common validation rules sometimes you have to make a custom validation is you actually have to ping some sort of API or something like that having it as an object makes it a lot easier to do that instead of trying to put all that inside of a closure. So I'm really big fan of the way that you do it now. So to show you guys how to make one let's go through and we're going to make a custom validation rule to validate a phone number, a US phone number. So we're gonna follow, I'm basically gonna convert this one here, which is a custom validation for a US phone number. Um, I'm gonna kind of convert it from the old method to the new method. So let's go ahead and make a new rule in the terminal. So this is an artisan command. So just like before, we're gonna do PHP artisan make. We're gonna say make a new rule and then we're gonna give our rule a name. So in this case, let's call it valid phone. All right, and let's go ahead and click enter. Rule creates, created successfully. And now if we come over here, you can see we have a new folder called rules. Inside there, we have a valid phone. Now let's take a look at this file real quick just to see what it looks like. It's in the rules namespace. You can see it extends a, um, a validation rule contract, which is great. Um, implements rule, great. And then here we have some functions. So we have our construct function. Remember that this is a this is an object. This is a valid phone object. Every time you validate, you're actually gonna create a new instance of this object. So what that means is you can do some more advanced stuff because it's an object. You could set some properties here. You could define properties in your construct method. You could do any of that object-oriented stuff that you're used to because this is an object and not a closure. So this allows you to do a lot more advanced things. Um, I'm really excited about it. You could also import, if you had to pull in Guzzle or something like that, you could import that up here. Um, so you have access to that. Now we're not gonna worry about the construct because we're not gonna need it for this example, but I just wanna let you guys know that it would be practical in some use cases. 
Then down here you have two other methods. You've got your passes function. The passes function is what is actually going to be the logic that you're going to run when you validate against the object. So um, the value of the the value of the um, input that you're validating against will be passed into the function. You can see here it'll be passed in as a value. And then um, you can validate against it using whatever logic you want. And you either want to return true or some sort of faulty value. So whenever you return true, it's going to be considered as successfully passing. And if it returns some sort of faulty value or, it, or if it doesn't return true at all, then it's going to be considered as a failure. It's going to have failed that validation. So um, whenever the validation fails, it's going to obviously do what the validation ob uh request object does, which is redirect back to the previous page. It passes in the old inputs and it passes in a bunch of messages for the validation rules that failed. And so to customize that validation, the message that gets sent back, if it fails, you would customize that here in the message, uh, in the message method. So make sure that this is actually a return. I was helping someone the other day on this and they just did this and it wasn't working. So make sure you're actually returning a string. Um, that's the way this message function works or method works. Okay, so that's that's it. That's how this rule works, okay? So that's how you would set this up. It's really nice. I like having my own file for this validation method. And as I get more of these validation methods that I need for this project, they each have their own file instead of them all being clustered in one, in one single function in the boot method of your service provider. That was a disaster before, and I'm so excited that we have this new method. This is really really big news. Okay, so let's go ahead and add this in. So what I'm going to do is back over here in our project, I'm just going to, this closure that we had, I'm just going to copy it and we're going to basically paste that in because that's our passes method. We don't need to worry about the constru construct method. Um, we're just going to basically um, pass this in. That's it. So let's go through. I think something is, yeah, we don't need these. Okay. So we've got that. We've got that. Hold on. Just looking at this. Okay, so this is going to validate, basically, it's going to take out all the extraneous um, numbers or all these symbols, and then it's going to um, clean it up, make sure it has its 10 digits, because you have your, um, you have three, three, four is the way a US phone number works, and then we have the number one at the beginning. So that's the way this works. Now, there are two parameters that get passed in on this. So you actually have the attribute parameter and you have the value parameter. Now keep in mind that the attribute parameter is going to be equal to this right here. So if you wanted to test for, I don't know when, I don't know exactly when you would use this, but if you ever wanted it, it would be this value right here. So if you wanted to somehow see if it's a specific field or something like that, when you're getting into custom validations, people might do that where it's like, is this, you know, is this input field called phone or phone underscore US or something? And then maybe if it's one or the other, you would validate it differently or something. I don't know, but I just want to let you know what this is. So you have access to that value, whatever the, um, the the actual input being validated is, is under the attribute parameter. And then you have the actual value of that attribute is passed in as the value parameter. Okay, so you can see here I'm testing against the value. And then we create a couple of variables. We're actually string replacing and using the value. So the value is the actual object, what's actually inside the input that gets passed in. The attribute is the name of the input, basically. It would be, in this case, this here is the attribute, and then the actual value of that that's being validated is the value, okay? So you have access to both of those here. I just wanted to mention that because I originally kind of forgot about that when I was first filming this. And it's going to return either true or false. You actually don't need to return false specifically. I believe you can just return it this way, but either way it's going to, uh, it'll work. And then we have our message. If it fails, we'll say this is not a valid US phone number. Okay, and that's it. That's all it takes to create it. So we've created our valid phone rule and we're done. So now let's go ahead and let's actually run it and test it. So inside of our controller, the question is, how do we actually run this once it's inside the controller? Okay, so now inside of here, you can see we've got our title, our content. Let's now add a phone. And I've actually gone to our form and before this video and I created a new field 
for a phone number and we named it phone. So now it's gonna come in the request as phone. And then we will pass in this time, we're gonna send, uh, validate it against an array. The first parameter in the array will be any normal validation objects we have, like maybe required. And then the second item in the array will be instantiating our new rule object. So in this case, it would be new valid phone. And then we do need to make sure that we, uh, let's do this, use um, app slash rules slash valid phone. And then that's it. So now it'll validate that it is a valid phone number by going out to that object and validating it. All right, so now um, we need to get rid of, we need to get rid of this real quick. So there we go. Now, okay, now that we're set up, we're gonna basically do our title, our content just as before, but now we're gonna validate the phone with a normal validation rule required and then against the custom one that we've created, which is a validation ob rule object, which is gonna be cool. So let's go ahead and do that. Hopefully we see valid data in our project. So let's go back over here. Just refresh real quick. We'll say post title, post content, just to get something in there. And then let's do a valid US phone. So let's go ahead and add one. That's the format. Click submit. We get valid data. So it is showing it successful. Now let's go through and let's do invalid data. So post title, post content, and then we'll just do a non-valid phone number. So we'll do like 801-750-110. There we go. Okay, so now that's too many numbers, not a valid phone number. Let's click submit. And there we go. It returns back and it says, this is not a valid US phone number. And so that message comes from our validation rule inside of this message right here. So it is validating, it's correct, and then it, if it's not correct, it returns back that message. So there you go. That's kind of how you can work with custom validation rules. Now, again, I really hope you guys are, this is a pretty big deal to me because I guess I've done so many custom validation rules in the past, and every time I've done it, I've always thought like, is this really the best way we could come up with to work with new custom validation rules? Like surely everybody has in your project, you have to make at least one or two custom validation rules depending on your project. And um, I always just felt like it was so sloppy the way you had to do it before where you had to inject it into your boot function of your app service provider. It was always just clunky and if you had lots of them, that whole function would just get so long and bloated. But now having this special folder for rules and then all of your validation in there, and then not only that, but it, it's super easy to read here and you can see that it's a valid, uh, you know, what you're doing inside of here as well, just makes it so easy. And then on top of that, the fact that this is a whole object allowing you to do whatever you want as an object, giving you the power of working with objects instead of at closures, makes it also just that much easier. So I'm super stoked about this. I think this is a huge deal. I'm so glad for bringing this in and I love the implementation of having these rule objects and each one is its own object. I think it's so cool. So thanks so much, Taylor, for bringing this to us. This is one of my favorite features that's in Laravel. Like literally this and package auto discovery are two of my favorite features, probably my two favorite features of Laravel 5.5. So hopefully you guys enjoyed the ride. Hopefully you guys learned a lot. This was a longer video, but I wanted to cover all the details so it made sense. So hopefully you guys learned a lot. Be sure to check out the next video, video number 10, where we talk about um, improvements to the router, to uh, the, the, route, the routes file and some cool new stuff that we can do. That'll be a little bit quicker. I'll show you guys that here in just a second. See you then.